Go can you say avocado? Avocado? No, say aw. Aw. The. Aw. No, say aw. Aw. Now say the. The. Caw. Caw. Duh. Duh. Now put yes, avocado. Avocado. <laughs> no. It's a hard word. It's a hard word. Avocado. Oh, that was good. That was great. Great. Thank goodness Nate is behind the camera now. I'm not trying to do this all by myself. I am I'm a mediocre vlogger, let's put it that way. Anyway, got to the gym, putting all my food in the fridge. We're gonna get to training ASAP. We just wrapped up training. Again, Nate's behind the camera helping me out so that I can do some stretching while we capture this vlog style video. Again, if you're liking it, make sure you hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more stuff like this vlog style, hit us in the comments below. Had just a quality training session, super quality training session. This is my fifth week of a training build that I uh, that is modeled after Persist Pump with a little bit of um, Persist Perform style workouts mixed in. And I'm definitely hitting my threshold of intensity. I have a, th a two, an overnight trip with my wife this weekend. I think I'm basically gonna turn it into like a three day no training weekend. Actually four if you include my true rest day tomorrow. So just gonna rest, recover, let my body adapt to this, more, this intensity that I've been doing and I've been bringing into my training, which I think is like a product of being able to, and feeling confident to push myself because I've been focusing on performance-based nutrition. Nutrition that will optimize how I perform in the gym and really just thinking, will this nutrition that optimizes performance in the gym detract from my mental focus, from my energy levels at other times of the day? And it really hasn't. It's actually improved a lot of things for me. So I'm happy with the changes that I made, the higher carbohydrate approach, minus the slight digestive issues that I've been having, just getting used to eating more, you know, fiber in my diet from plant foods, etc., carbohydrates. So I'm getting a little cool down right now, a little bit of a stretch. We're gonna shoot some demo videos for our Atom training platform so that all of our members can know exactly what to do and when to do it. Uh, we put a lot of energy and time into that, but it's also an energy output for me. You know, when we film, some days we'll film 30, 50 records have been set with 100 demo videos in a day. And you know, that's 45, to an, 45 minutes to an hour of additional pseudo training. Even Satya gets a workout, running around, bringing me equipment and things like that. So got a meeting coming up here in 30 minutes. Got to walk on the treadmill for that. Hopefully get some sunshine. There's still some sun blasting through the garage doors here. February, awesome time to get some sun if we have it. Rain might be coming back sometime soon. I'm talking a lot about the changes to my diet, but what's the same? Well, the same is that I start my day with a breakfast that's packed full of protein. This morning I had the overnight oats. I know there's a lot of carbs in that, but there was also 40 to 45 grams of protein in that. Getting a good start to the day with protein. I'm gonna have a big whop of protein along with a lot of carbohydrates post-workout. I've always been really good about my peri-workout nutrition, getting something before and something after, just to fuel the training and then start that immediate recovery hypertrophy process. I've always been somebody that put most of their carbohydrates right after training. Whether I was eating a lot of carbs or just a few carbs, it didn't matter. I would save those for after training. So I'm gonna get like 150 grams of carbs here uh, before that 12 o'clock meeting. Okay, we're gonna go shoot some demos. Okay, we got a few minutes before we gotta jump on this meeting. Here is post-workout meal. Uh, we've got egg, egg whites for a low-fat protein option, and then a bunch of potatoes with some green onions and parsley in here for some greenery and some flavor, spiced with cumin and uh, onion powder. I've got a little fruit to go with it. These are, these are like, these are oranges. They look kind of like grapefruits, but they're oranges. And about 30 grams of protein, 130 grams of carbs, relatively low fat, just to keep the digestion moving real fast after training. That's it, plus the protein I had before. I'm getting plenty of protein, don't worry about me, and uh, catch up with you later uh, for the next meal, bye. A few moments later. Hey everyone, it's two o'clock 
Uh, 2.15, I had my post-workout meal at 11.30 a.m. and now it's in the afternoon. I'm kind of having what I'll call my second lunch or my post-post-workout. I'll have dinner probably around five this evening. And what I've got here is a bowl of frozen berries that have been thawed a little bit. So about 350 grams of berries. And then I make this raw milk. I get raw milk from a local farm and then I ferment it with uh, kefir grains. And so I make kefir or kefir or however you'd like to say it. I make raw milk kefir, which is kind of like a tangy taste. Raw milk, full fat. So it's got everything you'd get from, from milk, but it's got, it's, it's like broken down a little bit. The fermentation breaks down some of the lactose, adds some good um, probiotics. This is how I get some of my probiotics and keep my digestion feeling healthy. And I love the taste of it. So that's, that's there. And then over here, this is uh, white jasmine rice with a little bit of raw milk butter on top of it. I also get the raw butter from a similar farm locally. And then I've got a shredded chicken breast recipe that I do in my slow cooker. It's got a lot of spices, it's got some mustard, it's got some hot sauce, and it is just like delicious shredded meat. Um, and I've posted that recipe recently on my social media on Instagram stories. So what I want to talk about just before I dive into my meal, I'm pretty hungry, and uh, is that, you know, I'm talking today at, at points along the way about what's the same about my diet, not what's different about my diet. Like, um, and what I keep coming back to lately as I'm referring to this on podcasts and I'm talking about it, the language on social media and different content, is this concept of uh, building structure that you can follow in your diet. And your structure doesn't have to look like my structure. My structure involves a level of uh, precision because I weigh and measure a lot of my food and I, so I count macros or I'm, I'm paying attention to that. But that doesn't have to be your structure. So I think a lot of people make the mistake of thinking I'm either going to be a counter or I'm not going to be a counter. And that's just not the reality of what creates success. You need to have some structure, which means you need to have some way of reliably getting in adequate nutrients or repeatable, consistent nutrients that you can track in some way. And it doesn't have to use, need a scale, and it doesn't have to use, you don't have to use an app for it, but maybe you are somebody who likes to eyeball protein portions, like palm-sized portions of protein. Or maybe you know that this particular meal has this composition of nutrients and I eat the same thing every breakfast every day and that helps you stay in a structured manner. People who are guessing every day and don't have a structure, they have these wide ranges of what nutrients they're getting, therefore they can't be predictable about how they're gonna feel, how much energy they're gonna get, how many calories they're gonna eat, and what they can expect out of their body. So without structure, you won't have success and your structure doesn't have to look like my structure, but you need to have some structure. And we're guiding people all the time through our coaching plat platforms and all of the resources that we put out on structure. I actually just put out an email recently to our newsletter, through our newsletter to all of our email subscribers on a tiered approach to building structure for yourself. So if you haven't been signed up to that, make sure you get in and sign up for the newsletter where we're giving out all this free content so that you can upgrade what you're doing with your own nutrition and your training. The next part is consistency follows structure. If you follow a structure, I eat the same meals every day, I weigh and measure, I use palm portions or hand portions of food, I get a fistful of veggies, I get a thumb size of, of fat, I get a palm serving of protein at every meal. If you follow some structure and you do it consistently for a period of time, you are in the top percent of all people who are trying to navigate their own nutrition and you are way ahead of the game in having the tools necessary to succeed. Because once you have structure and consistency, then whatever's happening with your body, whether it's the energy levels, the way it looks, the way it's performing, you can make adjustments based upon whether you're having yourself achieve goals or not. I'm putting on weight, well guess what? You need to change your structure. You need to reduce the amount of energy you're taking in or you need to move a little bit more. So make a small tweak to your structure. Cut your breakfast meal in half. Make one structural change, follow it consistently and see what the outcomes are. The structure consistency conversation is so vital. It's what gives you the tools to navigate your nutrition for life and make tweaks and changes as needed as your lifestyle changes and 
you get older, more mature, and you bring new things into your life. So I'll leave you with that. I'm gonna dive into this meal. I'll catch you for dinner. A few moments later. Now put it together. I've got a potato. <laughs> no. That's a hard word. It's a hard word. Avocado. Oh, that was good. That was Don't great. All right, that's a wrap on the day. Just finished up dinner with the kids. They're over there watching a little cartoon. My wife had to run out. She's going to a PTA or a PTO meeting. It's one of those acronyms, parent, teacher, organization type thing. And I'm gonna put these kids to bed here pretty soon. What I had for dinner was a Brussels sprout salad with some avocado and then a meat sauce that I had made a few days ago in the slow cooker which had grass-fed ground beef, tomatoes, and that's pretty much it, some other flavors. I had a kiwi and had a number of rice cakes and that made up the last meal of the day. I'm gonna make a mention of it because I won't be showing this the rest of the meal, but I've got my supplements for the night. I got this momentous sleep pack. I've got a couple other things right here, some zinc um, and other, and then in this, uh, another bit of magnesium and glycine and an element packet for electrolytes. I'm gonna drink this before bed. I guzzle a bunch of salt, those electrolytes, and some water, and it actually helps me not get up in the middle of the night to pee. The salt, I think, just helps me absorb and hold on to the water overnight. So that's my sleep hack. These things have been great. And then <clears throat> final thoughts on the day. I wanted to say that adaptations to new plans with your diet and your training, they probably are gonna take longer than you think. I've been at this for three months on this sort of new diet or approach to eating with higher carbs, higher calories, and I'm really only starting to get the full effects and feel what's happening in my body and make subtle tweaks and adjustments, and it's been three months. So you gotta give these things time, and I think if you stick to the foundational principles that I've talked about throughout this video, and you wanna make changes like on a macro level to you know, how you're gonna adjust your macronutrients, the number of calories, maybe you wanna go into a muscle gaining phase, you wanna go into a fat loss phase, and you're switching from something into a new phase of eating, intentional eating, make sure that you are giving it plenty of time to really sink in and take note of uh, what's happening in your body. The second thing I will say is that while the scale and uh, stepping on the scale can be a very good objective measurement, um, it doesn't work for everybody. I have actually not been stepping on the scale at all over the past three months because I don't want the number on the scale to impact my commitment to eating more food and focusing on my energy and my performance and my mental uh, acuity and just the, the concept and the feeling of building um, strength. So if I see my weight climb up, I don't want that to mess with my head and get me to start eating less calories or underfeeding myself. Uh, so if you have a goal, have some way of objectively measuring whether you're making progress that could be stepping on the scale, it could be a performance metric, it could be how you feel and look in the mirror, how your clothes are fitting. Make something that is objective that falls into the structure and consistency plan that I talked about before. You gotta know what's happening to your body. I hope this helped. Again, smash that like button if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment below. If you wanna see more vlogs like this, I'd be happy to make more. Give me topics that you wanna see. What do you wanna see behind the scenes of? And I'll catch you next time.